Hey everybody, this is Lewis Lewis Speaks 2019. And I want to take a moment to talk to you today about on again, off again friendships. We know those on again, off again romantic relationships where a couple is together, then they're not together, then they're together again, then they're not together again. But this is something totally different. This is where you're on with someone and you're off again with a friendship. You know, it's a platonic friendship, no romance involved. But you notice that this friendship ebbs and flows between on, you guys are good, you guys are cool, and then off where you don't talk as much, you kind of distance yourself or you notice that they're doing the fade. Um, I recently had the privilege of terminating a 12-year on-again, off-again friendship. And I say it was a privilege because this was a friend that I thought was a friend, quote, but they turned out to be someone who was very toxic, was very traumatized, and they were reenacting their traumas in our bond. And I noticed that. Um, so once again, I'll go back, you know, um, living in Albany is very difficult. You know, oftentimes you don't find much representation here in terms of black, gay, professional, intelligent men. So when I met this person, this person checked all those boxes. You know, and so I felt a connection with them and they felt the same way. You know, we were all in the same boat. And so we leaned on each other for that connection, that camaraderie. And what I'll say is this, just because you're black, gay, professional, intelligent, that don't mean that you are right for me, you know, and that don't mean that I'm right for you. That just means that we share certain things in common. And sometimes that's just not enough to make a friendship work. Sometimes just those qualities in and of themselves are not enough to make that friendship work, especially if somebody is not motivated to begin unpacking their traumas, unpacking their childhood wounds, unpacking the issues that might ultimately end the friendship. So basically this friend um, checked all those boxes. You know, we interacted you know, a couple of times we had a good, like I said, it was a, a decent friendship. But throughout the friendship, I got the sneaking suspicion that I was the functional friend. I was a convenient distraction. I felt as though if this person moved, and this is a good question to ask yourself. If this person moved, would they still maintain contact with me? Would we still be friends? The answer that I got in my head immediately was no. And that right there should have been the red flag that stopped me. But no, I was lonely. I was desperate for connection. And so I continued, continued, continued to engage with this person. And by doing that and by ignoring those signs, I ended up playing myself. Um, so... What ended up happening is that we lost contact, you know, first time. Then we decided to reinitiate contact, going to the gym. We were going as friends. We were, everything was cool. Then they got into a relationship. And I know that romantic relationships can definitely be very all-consuming. You can get into the love haze and you can definitely kind of block out the world. I understand that. But after me repeatedly me trying to make plans, by having those plans either canceled or there was a no-show, there was no call, just nothing. After repeated attempts doing that, I started to get the impression that this person did not value my friendship. And so, I fell back. I fell back. And so, we stopped talking for a long time, I would say for a year. This person, within that span of time, they were living right across the street from me. They ended up moving, didn't tell me where they were going. There was no connection, which I, like I mentioned before earlier, you know, I knew that. I knew that. So I run into this person at the club. You know, we engage in these pleasantries. I don't know how they feel about anything, mind you. They never sat me down, communicated their own grievances. We just had this very distant, kind of high and by situation. Fast forward, they text me wanting to go out to the club. I didn't respond back because I felt that they were just emotionally inauthentic and only saw me as a functional friend, a convenient distraction. So I was like, nah, I don't want to be used that way. So the next day, 
I decided to confront this friend. And I started off by asking them, hey, did you move? And then they told me that they did. You know, initially they try to kind of deflect away from it, but they told me they admitted that they did. And I was like, okay, why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you let me know? And so they responded. They told me that since we weren't speaking at the time, they didn't feel obligated to let me know. Okay. So I was like, well, you know something? I wish that you would have communicated that to me. That was really important. Then they went into how they felt as though our friendship wasn't really deep. I only called them when I wanted to go to the club. I only hit them up. And I was like, wait a minute. Untrue. There were always times where I not only wanted to go to the club, I wanted to go to the gym. I wanted to schedule trips with this person, make future oriented plans with this person, but this person was unavailable and they didn't show up. They did not call. They left communication primarily up to me. So I was like, wait a minute. My crew can't go for that. You got to be honest with me and you got to take responsibility. What made me decide to end this friendship was they tried to have me share. They tried to have me share in the blame as opposed to taking full responsibility for their part. And then they said things like, maybe there is some truth. Maybe there is some truth, but my other friendships didn't suffer. Oh, well, your other friendships probably didn't suffer because you were investing time and energy into those relationships. So for you to tell me that, oh, my other friendships didn't suffer and try to compare only makes me feel as though you just cheated me and shortchanged me for, uh, the, 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 the benefits of your friendship and focus more on those other relationships. So that did not make me feel good at all. Mainly the toxic manipulation, trying to, how you say, devalue my experience, undermine my intuition, trying to make me feel as though I'm some kind, somehow guilty, you know, trying to flip the script and turn the tables. I don't got time for nobody like that. It's 2020 about to be, and I'm not going to sit up there and take somebody into the next year with me. I'm not going to do that. So I said, you know something? They were open to a reconciliation. They were like, well, I'm open to a reconciliation, probably because their relationship is no longer working out. And so they want to try and what? Re reconcile with me um, for another convenient distraction. I said, you know something? Scratch all that. Reconciliation, there's no need for us to sit down. Thank you for your friendship. I have no interest in dealing with somebody that does not value my friendship full time. You have a nice day, have a nice life. I wish them well on their journey. I realized that constantly engaging with part-time people, you get part-time love. And basically part-time love is the same as no love. This person was emotionally inauthentic. And what I'm trying to be in 2020 is emotionally authentic. I'm trying to be real. I am trying my best to be the man of my dreams. I'm trying to be the friend that I want. And so this person does not, is incompatible. They're incompatible with that goal, you know? And I'm reprioritizing my values. And I'm asking myself when I meet people, is this person in alignment with my values? If they're not in alignment with my values, they got to go. Period. Period. So with these on again, off again friendships, chances are you're getting signs and you're getting clues that these people are not good for you, but yet and still you cling on and you hang on because you're probably afraid of being alone. You have abandonment issues. You have other childhood wounds that are unaddressed and that's causing you to attach yourself to these relationships and replicate and duplicate the, the issues that you, that you have, you know? These bonds, these trauma bonds that you form with other people, they're feeding off of those old wounds. This is why you continue to attract because inside of you is this magnet of trauma, this magnet of wounds 
And so when that magnet is still activated and you haven't deactivated that magnet, you're still attracting, still pulling, still pulling other people who are wounded, who are damaged in that mirror, those wounds, you know? And so that's for a long time I was attracting these on again, off again friendships. But I realized that that was just, once again, me coming face to face with my wounded self and how my wounds were playing out and causing me to engage in this repetition compulsive cycle, you know, where you kind of set up, you know, you set up these new relationships hoping to resolve the nonsense from your past. I can't keep doing that. I can't keep, so I decided to kind of self-heal. I decided to reflect on my, what my issues were. I had to take accountability. You know, and I realized that, you know, something, these, these relationships cannot go on if you don't participate. Your participation in the nonsense is what continued these relationships, you know? And so I choose no longer to participate. That's why I bowed out gracefully. And so if you are in this cycle of on again, off again relationships, I definitely encourage you to assess your role. Ask yourself what traumas are you continuing to nurse? What wounds lie still unresolved in your psyche that's causing you to continue to be attracted to these relationships? You know, because no relationship can go on without the participation of two people. Can't do it. So you have to ask yourself, how are you contributing? to this on again, off again? Are you being honest with yourself? Or like me, were you or are you pretending? Pretending to be okay with things that you're not okay with just to have a friendship, just to have a relationship, just to have someone. Is it worth it? You really have to ask yourself these tough questions and come face to face. Because in the final analysis, if you don't heal the wounds that are buried deep inside you, they're going to end up destroying every part of your life, every part. And you're gonna constantly be confronted with mirrors, mirrors, be it other people projecting their own issues on you, be you projecting your own issues on them. You're gonna constantly be confronted with these mirrors that are gonna bring you face to face with your wounds. So until they are healed, get ready to keep on facing broken mirrors. It's time to heal. It's time to heal. No more on again, off again friendships. If they can't be on all the time, turn them off. You know? For 2020, a lot of relationships are going off the air in my life. And that's because these relationships are based on the old traumas. I want new, healthy relationships in my life, and that's what's coming. Because like I said, I'm doing the work now, and I encourage you all to do the work too. You deserve full-time friends, not people that are going to be in your life only when they want something, when they need something, you know, or when you can serve as a convenient distraction away from their boredom. That's not the kind of friend you deserve. You know, you deserve a friendship that's going to be there for you through the thick, through the thin, through the joys and the pains. Not a fair weather friend, not a foul weather friend, but an even weather friend who's consistent, who's emotionally authentic, who can communicate their grievances to you in the moment and not store them up, store them up and hold them as ammunition to attack you later on. You know, a lot of times we're the last to know. We never knew, like even in my situation, I never knew that this person felt this way about me. I never knew that for so long they were harboring these feelings, but they were. And it all, at the end, like I said, at the end of the day, it all came out, it all came to a head and those feelings were expressed. And I got angry because why wasn't this communicated to me before? But I know now, and when you know better, you do better. So I encourage you all, if you are in an on again, off again friendship, time to evaluate. Time to evaluate whether or not you wanna continue this friendship. Is it even worth it? So I encourage you all 
take care of yourselves, to begin to do your own healing work. And I thank you for listening. This has been Lewis Speaks 2019. And have an amazing day.